All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, here we are to talk about the military flight bag program. We've assembled our team of the military flight bag and uh, a team of veterans here at Four Flight to give you all the tips and procedures you can use on your mission. We'll start off by introducing everybody today. My name is Tom Gallagher. I'm a former Navy pilot. I flew the P3 for about 10 years, flew all over the world, and uh, now I'm working at Four Flight on the pilot support team. I'm also flying a private charter right now, and uh, happy to be excited to bring my experience to, to the uh, discussion today. Hi, uh, my name is Sarah Kenny. I'm a product analyst for Military Flight Bag. Uh, I'm a veteran of the New Hampshire Air National Guard, where I supported the 157th Air Refueling Wing and their fleet of KC-135s as a combat crew communications and cyber surety technician. And uh, I also have several years experience as a crew scheduler and ops manager in the business aviation world. So I'm glad to be here and thanks to all the participants for joining us. Uh, I'll hand it over to Don. Hi, Don Jones here, uh, retired Air Force. Spent most of my time flying Strike Eagles out of Lake and Heath and Mountain Home and finished up the last five years with the Singapore Air Force at Luke and the F-16. Afternoon, everyone. My name is Joshua Clay. I'm a uh, former Leatherneck uh, from HMLA 367. Cut my teeth in aviation as a logistics and operations guy. Uh, load planned everything from C-130s to a uh, AN-124s. Um, Four Flight picked me up as a uh, dispatcher and flight planning specialist, so I'll be uh, introducing the filing portion of Four Flight today. I'll go ahead and kick it over to Grant. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Grant Gibbons, uh, 15 years civilian trained ATP helicopter pilot. I uh, flew search and rescue in the Gulf of Mexico in support of our oil and gas industry, and currently fly single pilot IFR uh, in the helicopter air ambulance industry. Uh, in both of those roles, I've had a need to import custom content into ForeFlight, and that's what brings me here today. I'm here to share a little bit about how custom content can be applicable for military aviators. And with that, I'll turn it over to Travis. And hi, everyone. I am Travis Root. I'm the product manager and team lead for ForeFlight's military program and the military flight bag product. I'm a former Air Force Intel officer and a private instrument rated pilot. And we're, uh, we're very glad to have us with you here today. Thank you for taking time out of your day to, to join us, uh, especially during this, uh, this difficult time for everyone. Um, we have, we're, we're very excited about the military business at Flight. We've seen it grow tremendously over the past couple of years, and that is all thanks to you fine men and women of our armed services. We're very glad to have you here today. Military flight bags started back in 2013 when the NGA first approached for flight about including the, the D-flip and the day fifth navigation data that they produce in our, uh, in our EFB application. That began by just taking their DVDs and, and scripting the data off of that into the iPad. We've grown it from there into a fully uh, integrated cloud-backed uh, best of breed software application. And we're really excited to talk to you today about all the things we've added to that to make your life as a military aviator uh, easier and uh, we hope more fun. Before we begin, we're using the GoToWebinar software, as I'm sure you've noticed. We have this panel on the side where you're free to ask a question at any time. We'll, we'll have some pauses during the webinar and uh, Don and the team will pick questions off the pile and ask them aloud and we'll chat you questions as well. This will be available to view afterward. We'll host it on our, uh, our website. And this session is recorded uh, for that purpose. Uh, one last item, if you are having trouble seeing the screen, if it's not coming through, go ahead and rejoin the webinar, restart your browser, you'll still be able to get back in. And that could, uh, that could fix any problems that you're having. But if you can't, uh, just catch us afterward on the website and we'll have everything we have for you today uh, viewable. Uh, one last item, we will have a survey following the webinar. If you'd be so kind as to let us know what you think of what we present here today, uh, we'd be very grateful for your feedback. With that, let's get going. All 
All right, so um, first things first, I want to talk through how to set up your iPad so that you can use it on your mission to the, to the max effect. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the charts that are available in ForeFlight. Um, so in addition to all the government charts, you get your NROUTE, IFR, and VFR, and approach plates, DOD people will be able to get the, uh, the TPC, ONC, range, jog, and you can even uh, get worldwide Jepson by linking your JMCS credentials. So you can go on their website and link that to ForeFlight for free. Uh, I was a chart officer at my old squadron, and part of my job was hauling paper charts in and out of the squadron, throwing out the old ones, uh, and managing that. I can remember bringing a duffel bag full of charts on a repositioned flight to a deployment site, and then once we got there, we had to throw them all away. It was a real challenge, especially at a remote location, to keep current with charts. So ForeFlight solves all those problems. It's going to bring it all to you on your iPad, and that way you can update it and have it current right there on your iPad without having to worry about the paper trail. The next thing I wanna talk about is documents, which is very useful for uh, DOD. So the documents for DOD, you have your area planning, you have your NROUTE SUP, the FIH and general planning. So these are all documents that you need anytime you're gonna be operating nationwide. On top of that, you can have squadron documents. So you can bring in your own imported documents. This would be an example, maybe an SOP, a local, uh, maybe a local procedure at a deployment site, or something within your squadron. Maybe study material, an aircraft manual, or things that you want to have on site with you on your iPad. Uh, gone are the days of doing the paper updates where you have to take apart your aircraft manual and put in the new pages. Now you can just update them directly to your iPad. So next on the maps, I want to talk a little bit about weather. So Fourth Flight is linked with the 557th Weather Wing. So this is going to be your official DOD weather for the Air Force and the Army. So we're going to have the worldwide icing and turbulence, as well as the uh, DOD METARs, which are going to be available at the airports. So we'll go ahead and show you what these look like real quick. And then we come over to uh, Offutt Air Force Base. So you can see we have a DOD METAR from the 557th Weather Wing. It looks like good weather there today. So you can see it was 14 minutes ago, and you can see in parentheses 557 Weather Wing to show you the source. You can also check on TAFs, and you can get all the same kind of weather briefings that you would get for a typical uh, civilian flight, but you also have access as a DOD member to this DOD weather contact. So we'll take a minute here if uh, any questions have popped up already, just to ask about the general setup of the iPad, especially as it goes with charts. Tom, do you want to uh, show how the individual DOD charts are downloaded? Yeah, thank you. So I'll go through kind of a brief demo here. So you're just going to tap more. And then you come down to DOD, which you can see here on the screen, tap DOD. And then you just kind of go through this and item by item, you're going to pick uh, which ones that you want to have included. And then all you have to do is connect to Wi Fi from there. And then come down here and hit the download button. So we also have a map feature here. So we're going to use the example of the uh, jog charts. So this is going to make it a lot easier for you if you know what your general operating area is. You can actually circle it directly on the map, and that's going to just choose them all a lot easier for you. As you can see, there are hundreds of different products here. So if you can just use the uh, that tool right there to annotate where on the map you want to be, that's going to set it up very easily for you. So there we see the after we circled it, those downloads are up for download. And all you have to do is tap download, and they'll uh, go ahead and come on your device. All right. Well, thank you, Tom. And if there are no questions at this point, I'd like to discuss on the map some additional military-specific features we have, beginning with the 
military training routes and aerial refueling tracks. To activate these, use the map cog, as we call it at the top of the screen, the map settings menu, and select military training routes. You have your choice to display the instrument, slow, and visual routes. We'll pick slow routes today. And the aerial refueling tracks are simply a toggle. With these active, we'll zoom in around our hometown of Austin, Texas, and you'll see these gold airways are our military train routes, which, as many of you know, are low-level, high-speed corridors of three-dimensional airspace where military training is, is often allowed to occur. To get information about the military train route, tap on the identifier, and you'll see this pop over listing a variety of information about the military training route. The same can be done on points to find their usage code, name, crossing altitude, and corridor information. To see the corridor in more detail, use the highlight feature. Tap on an MTR, select the highlight button, and the corridor will appear. These corridors are as published in AP1B, and we also apply a directional arrow and crossing altitude labels for better planning of your MTR. Tap off of the highlight to clear it. And to add it to your route, simply use the add button from the popover. You'll see the route line populate, the crossing altitude labels appear, and the corridor appears as well. Use the highlight feature of another MTR, which crosses to show potential conflicts. The darker area where the two corridors overlap are places to look for conflicting high-speed traffic and tap off of this to clear it as well. However, we realize that you don't always fly down the center line of an MTR, so we allow you to touch plan through the corridor, like so. Simply grab the line, drag it, and select the location to fly through the MTR using the entire corridor of airspace as you uh, see fit according to your flight plan. With the obstacle layer on from the layer selector as I have here, you can see towers and maneuver to avoid them. In the flight plan drawer, we can see uh, the listing of the points. I'll go ahead and clear that to show you something a little special we do with MTRs. We realize that oftentimes you don't fly an entire MTR. What if I only want to fly a portion of this route? To do this, Let's say I want to enter SR-286 at point B. I'll type bravo dot SR-286. Let's say I want to exit at point delta. So add dot delta, space to enter. And now, all that's added to my route is the portion of the MTR which transits those points, bravo to delta. I can add any other element to my route, such as a return to Austin like so. Now let's have a look at an aerial refueling track. Find AR614 here. You can also find either an MTR or an AR track that you're assigned from our search menu. Type AR614. You'll see the result here, the aerial refueling track, and it points us to the aerial refueling track. You'll notice the popover has appeared, indicating the altitude, the air-to-air -air attack in, and the frequencies to use as part of planning this aerial refueling track. I'll go ahead and add this to my route. You can see the turns are, are modeled, and Forflight will intelligently find, based on my current position or from my previous point of my flight plan, which direction to enter and exit the aerial refueling track. If this track had more than one entry, it would correctly find the one closest to me to provide an efficient entry and exit from the route. Each point's now highlighted with its usage code and the NAVAID radial and distance, as you might find on your Form 70 or in your FMS. In the flight plan drawer, it will appear as AR614. Tap on the route bubble. You can see a popover appear with the option to expand the AR pattern. I'll do that now. And now each individual point is available. I can remove points as I see fit, and I can choose to fly the route however I like to handle non-standard 
entries, exits, and routing within the protected airspace. The protected airspace is seen on the map there in green. And finally, we'll show you our very popular bullseye feature. To use the bullseye, any map element that you can tap on can be made with bullseye. We'll start with San Antonio. Uh, we'll use the set as bullseye option. You can see the bullseye icon appear. Now with the bullseye set, if I reveal the instrument panel using the button at the top, with a bullseye instrument set, selectable from the list, simply tap on the instrument, I get a radial and distance of my current location from the bullseye icon, which I've just set. I can set the bullseye from a tappable map element, from a long tap on the map, simply tap and hold, more set as bullseye, you see it's moved and my position is updated, or from a set of coordinates, either a lat long or an MGRS, given to me perhaps at the start of an exercise. One, four, T, by 10 digit grids, hit go, floor flight will snap to that location, set as bullseye, and I move the bullseye to the coordinates passed to me. Finally, I can measure other items on the map based on the bullseye. Long tap on any element, let's say this lake near Del Rio, and I'm given a readout here in the bullseye cell of that distance and radial from the bullseye of the location I've tapped. I can also navigate based on the bullseye by typing bullseye into the search bar, then providing a radial and distance. Floor flight snaps to that location, and I can add it to my route. To save time, I don't need to type the entire word bullseye. I can shorten that to B and get the same result. Now, let's apply a scenario combining all of those elements. But before we do, are there any questions that have come up so far? Yeah, Travis, just a second. Let me get to the uh, list here. Some people are not seeing uh, the MTR or the uh, air refueling option on their app. So it may be an issue of not updating in time. So can you show how to check what version they're on? Certainly. AR tracks were released last October, I believe in the 11.8 release. So you'll need at least that version to access the aerial refueling tracks. To find your version, tap more, about, and the version will be listed at the top of the screen. If you're using the NGA version, which is indicated by a black camouflage, camouflage icon, the newest available at the moment is 12.2. So all of those should have aerial refueling available, either currently or as an available update. All right, thank you. Then one other and, thing uh, to check. Questions is, about giant reports, we'll get to that in a little bit. One other thing to check just to make sure is check the map settings at the top of your screen. It's the gear shaped icon. So once you uh, open that menu, scroll down to the bottom and you can check to make sure that you have military training routes and air refueling tracks selected. And finally, if neither of those work, if you're on the correct version and you can't see the options in the map icon, write into team at Foreflight and we'll take a look at your account. Because this is military data, we have to permission it specifically, and we can take a look and make sure that you have the correct permissions. Okay, let's one move on to this about, One more question about uh, military training routes and the arrow layer. Mm -hmm. You do have to have the arrow layer, layer enabled, but you can actually show the military training routes and the air refueling routes on any map on, on top of that. That is correct. I will turn off the arrow filters on the left here, and I'll disable the obstacle filter. So these are only controlled by the map cog settings. They're not controlled by any other arrow layer filter. I can remove all other elements except these and use them alone on the map.
Okay. Select a scenario we saved and our favorite route. We'll depart today out of Arcata Eureka. We'll fly SR-353, refuel on AR-621. We'll hold for 30 minutes at the ACV Navig, and we'll return to Arcata Eureka. And we'll do all of this in a C-130J, not meant to be typical of this aircraft's uh, mission or capabilities, simply to show uh, that military aircraft are available and their profiles as well. Profiles are selectable here and we'll stick with the default for now. Having entered a route in my flight plan editor, I'll select the nav log option, and ForeFlight gives me the distance and direction of each of the points in my route, including the military training route. Tapping on the profile button, ForeFlight shows me the terrain across my route. I have an altitude selector here, which can be moved up and down. And selecting an altitude, ForeFlight will indicate with red where a collision with terrain may be likely. I can long tap on the profile and have a line appear. Jogging this line down my route, which is also depicted in the profile, I'll get this green dot moving down my route, changing to yellow and finally to red as I approach where in the route I'm likely to encounter terrain. Airspace will highlight as well and the terrain altitude is displayed above the dot, the distance along the route displayed below the dot. In the profile, I can also tap any airspace to get information about it and see it highlighted on the map. And the width of the corridor is selectable using the corridor width selection icon. I can also adjust my, out, my terrain clearance warnings to be anywhere from 100 feet and 1,000 feet, all the way down to 25 feet to 100 feet. Finally, with two fingers on the map at once, you can generate a ruler, jog the ruler down my route to see the terrain profile at the width I select and at the point on the route. Map annotations can be used using the pencil on the side to indicate any area, such as where I would encounter that terrain, select done to leave it on the map. And plates in ForeFlight are viewable on the map as well. I have my selection of many plates by tapping on the aircraft, by tapping on the airport, selecting approach, and choosing from a variety of plates. Both government and Jefferson charts are available using a link to Jefferson subscription. And finally, custom approaches are available as well. Notice at the top, MFB content pack is a new category. Select the Copter ILS, not published in the standard FAA set. You see it on the map here. And Grant will dive deeper into content packs later and tell you more about this functionality. Tap on the plate to hide. And before we move on, are there any questions on this scenario? Nothing specific to that, Travis, you can continue. Okay. Great, so uh, I'll take over and give us another scenario here. So we're gonna get the Marines on board now. We're gonna do a uh, flight from Camp Pendleton to 29 Palms. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be flying a C-130 and dropping some Marines at a 29 pop. So I'm going to show you how to do that and give you an idea of some of the other uh, functionalities that we can see along the way. So the way that I build a flight, I like to start on the maps page here. I'm going to just enter in my airport codes. So I'm going to enter in Kilo, November, Foxtrot, Golf, Kilo, Tango, November, Papa. So right off the bat, we can see on the bottom of the route editor screen, it's going to be about 86 miles, about 20 minutes, and about 3,000 pounds of fuel. Um, so I can look at my altitudes. I can look at uh, what air or what uh, performance profile I want to use. This is a good way to just give me a real rough estimate of how things are going to go. 
but I want to be a little more specific with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the route advisor on the right hand of the screen. So the route advisor is a quick way for you to pull up routes that are optimized for your aircraft and the airport pair that you're using. It's also going to incorporate uh, previously filed ATC routes. So these routes are going to be pretty accurate and you're going to be able to rely on them as something you're going to use. So I see we have two routes here. I'm going to select the first one. I'm going to select this route. It's going to suggest that I go to flight level 290, which is going to be a more efficient uh, altitude for my aircraft. You know, you can keep it to whatever you want. For the sake of today, I'm going to go up to flight level 290. And I'm going to choose my runway, runway 21. So there you can see we have a more detailed route, and we also have a departure out of uh, Camp Pendleton. So I'm going to tap on the bubble for the Bulldog 1 out of runway 21. And before I take off, I want to get an idea of what I'm getting myself into. So I'll tap Show Plate. And there we can see a uh, plate for the procedure. So this is a DOD plate for Camp Pendleton, and it's going to walk us through the Bulldog 1 departure. So for my own proficiency, I think I'd like to go ahead and do an approach at 29 palms. So I can once again tap Procedure for the Procedure Advisor here, and then I'll tap Approach at 29 palms. I need a VOR approach. Luckily, they have one there. So I'm going to do the VOR runway 26. So here it gives us a choice of uh, what we want to use as our initial approach fix. I'm going to use the NAVAID. And there we can see this is actually going to give us one turn in holding. So I'm actually going to get that knocked out for my proficiency as well. So I'm going to add that to my route. So here again, we have an example of a, a georeference plate that is on the map. So this has GPS data embedded within it and is going to be accurately displayed on the map. What's more is when I'm flying, I'm going to actually see my aircraft position on the, on the plate as I'm flying. So one way that you can also, so that's a nice way that you can kind of pre-flight the approach. Four flight has recently added 3D functionality, so I'm going to walk you through that. So we can actually pre-flight our entire flight from 3D. So here we are taking out, taking off of Camp Pendleton. As you all know, this is a pretty mountainous area. We're going to be way above it at uh, 25,000 feet. So we can actually fly the entire route in advance. Like we said, we're going to have that one turn in holding. Four flight actually recognizes that, and we can 3D preview that as well. And now we're back on the final approach course. So this, to me, is the most valuable part of the 3D preview. Um, you know, you're always going to be flying into new locations, and this is a great way to pre-flight it. This is a great way for you to get familiar with an aircraft, or excuse me, an airport that you've never been to before you even fly there. So here we go on short final, and you can see this gives you an opportunity to look for ground reference points. Maybe if you're preparing for deployment, you can actually go ahead and fly some of these approaches. And you can look for ground reference points on the way in. So there we are, runway 26. If you tap on the bubble for 29 palms in the route editor, you can also do a 3D view of the entire airport. So this is going to let you look from above. It's going to let you go. 360 degrees around the airport. You know, 29 Palms is in the middle of the desert, but uh, if you're going to be in, a, in an area with a lot of terrain, this might give you a good idea for a ground reference point. You know, here we see there's some structures in front of the approach end of the runway. On a cloudy day, that might be the kind of thing that you're looking for. So the next thing I'm going to show you is the pack feature. So the pack feature, we have the uh, suitcase with the exclamation point on it. So the pack feature is going to be something you want to do before every single flight. What it's going to do is it's going to load all the information you need within a 25 nautical mile radius of your flight route, and it's going to be available to you for offline use. That's going to be your weather, airmats, sigmats, TFR, fuel prices. 
airport NOTAMs, and that 3D imagery we just showed you, as well as all of your charts and the uh, approach plates uh, for those airports. This is going to be one of the things you want to do right before you walk to the aircraft, just to make sure you have everything you need. Make sure you do this for every flight. Um, so another thing right next to PAC is the STAR. So if this is going to be a route, let's say you're going somewhere and you're going to be flying this route pretty consistently, you can save it, you can give that route a name, and then you can pull it up a lot more quickly uh, in the future. So finally, I'm going to set a uh, estimated time of departure. So it's the Marines. So we'll say Saturday at uh, 0400 AM. So we'll say Friday at 04 AM. And there you can see it's populated. So now we have all this specific information for our flight. It's going to be about 130 nautical miles, take us about a half hour. And we're going to be there bright and early, ready for training at 426 AM. So finally, what we're going to do is we're going to use the send to feature, which is at the all the way on the right side of the route editor. This is how you can share your route with somebody. Maybe the night before a flight, you can email this to your co-pilot. You could email it to other people in the crew. That way, it's going to show them what they have in store for the next day. Also in the send to tab, uh, so I know I'm going to want to file this flight plan, and maybe I don't want to do it early in the morning. So I'm going to go ahead and send this to the flights tab and we're gonna walk through how to file a flight plan. So before we do that real quick, um, I'm gonna hand this off to Josh, our filing expert, but let's take a minute if there's any questions out there about what we've seen so far. Hey Tom, uh, we did see a couple questions from people asking how you added that delay to your flight plan. Do you mind going back and, and showing uh, the specific syntax needed to do that? Yeah. So uh, the way that you would add a delay in a flight plan, um, so let's say that you're going to be maybe going to a training base and you want to do multiple approaches. So the way that I recommend that you do this would be to put in the uh, initial approach fix, the waypoint, whatever that would be for the initial approach fix. So yeah, you can just use TNP there. And backslash, or excuse me, forward slash, then D plus maybe zero plus three zero. So that's going to be a 30 minute delay there. So that's just going to communicate to ATC that you want to have a 30 minute delay. From there, I would recommend uh, what you do is, and we'll get into this later, Josh can show us this in the next step, but when you're building your flight plan that you're actually going to file, what you want to do is go down to the remarks section and put a remark in for ATC. You know, I recommend you just say request multiple pr practice approaches at uh, 29 palms, Kilo, Tango, November, Papa. And that'll just kind of clarify to ATC what you're actually wanting to do with that delay. Uh, there is also one question here. Is the 3D review included in all uh, MFBs, military flight bag subscriptions, or is it an add-on that has to be purchased? The 3D preview features and review uh, as part of the track log, those are included in all of Four Flight's performance subscriptions, including MFB performance. So those of you who have the performance subscription, I know uh, portions of, of ACC, AMC, AFSOC, and others have this, uh, this license, you will be able to access the 3D features. Thank you. And uh, there have been a couple questions regarding PAC and people wanting to um, change the radius of PAC or possibly change what is packed. Um, and I'll go ahead and say that there, there isn't any way right now to change the radius. It's always uh, 25 nautical miles uh, around the route. And uh, there is, as uh, they're showing right now, there's this option to enable the auto pack feature. And that's what uh, causes that red exclamation mark to appear on the FPL button when you have a new route that you haven't packed. There is a way to change what routes are packed. Uh, Forfight only tries to pack, uh, or not what routes, but what charts are packed. Uh, only the charts that you have selected within the downloads view will be packed. So if you don't have VFR charts selected in downloads, then Forfight will not attempt to pack those for your route. But other than that, there isn't any way to um, change like what weather and NOTAM information is packed.
Okay. If we're ready, I will hand it over to Josh to talk about the flights view. All right, everybody. I'm happy to say that filing in for flight is a really easy process, um, especially for our military guys. Uh, no matter what mission you're filing, um, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and start with uh, what you see on the screen now. Now, I highly encourage that whenever you are filing the flight plan, that or before you file the flight plan, that you just double check your information here. Um, specifically, you wanna pay attention to uh, your ETD. Um, sometimes users will file a day before or a day after, easy mistake to make. Um, go ahead and double check your routing, make sure everything is all set. Uh, once you've confirmed all the information on this screen, I want you to go ahead and hit proceed to file. Now, once you hit proceed to file, it's gonna bring up a window called the filing form. This is specifically what is gonna be sent to ATC and or uh, base ops, depending on what you decide. So if you look at the top, you'll see form type. Now there's three types of forms that you can file within for a flight. There's the FAA domestic, an ICAO flight plan, and the DD-1801. Uh, for this demonstration, we're gonna go ahead and select the DD-1801. And then once that form type is selected, you can go ahead and scroll down your filing form and take note of all the information that you have here. You have aircraft, your call sign, uh, airspeed, airport, departure time again, very important. Uh, you have your routes, all the information that you've already planned uh, that Tom showed you earlier in the scenario. Now, if you keep scrolling down, you're gonna be able to see that remarks section. Now, this is specifically um, where you're gonna put in, if you're flying uh, multiple approaches or you're just doing pattern work in the area, you can put anything in the remarks field. This is a free form text section uh, that it just relays your intent to ATC and to both, uh, I'm sorry, both ATC and base ops. As you see, go ahead and putting in practice approaches. KTMP, perfect at 29 palms. And that will just relay your intent clearly. Now, the next thing I want to show, show you is uh, if you scroll down just a little bit further, you see your passenger counts, any kind of survival equipment that's necessary. Obviously, if you're doing over water operations, you'll need to have that. Um, emergency contact information. And then at the very bottom here is a very important piece. Now, there's two ways that you can use the DD-1801. If you're filing it to ATC, so in this scenario, we're going to be going through civilian airspace. So obviously, we're going to want to be communicating with uh, LA Center or whoever is uh, controlling that airspace. Now, when it's filed electronically, you see in the bottom right, it says file. Now, if we deactivate the file electronically feature, it's gonna change the icon to notify. Now, this means that the only people involved are gonna be base ops and ATC is not gonna have a copy of the flight plan. This would be something that you would do if you're just flying sorties in the area, if you're doing a quick, uh, maybe a gun run on Camp Pendleton, whatever the case may be. ATC is not gonna to be too concerned about that. But for this scenario, let's go ahead and enable file electronically. And actually one more thing to point out, if you notice there's, a, there's an email list that you can also um, enter into this. So depending on your SOPs, not only does base ops wanna know, but your squadron ops wanna know as well. So you can go ahead and input their email address um, to copy them on the flight plan as well. So let's go ahead Exactly right there. So we'll, for this scenario, we'll say Tom is the, uh, the squadron operations officer that's monitoring that day. All right. Now our next step, we're gonna go ahead and hit file. Now, obviously you guys know that whenever you're filing the DD-1801, it's gonna require a signature as well. So let's go ahead and tap file. And then the next window that's going to pop up is going to be the actual DD-1801. Now, as I always like to reiterate, double check all of your information to confirm that it is correct. After you have confirmed that everything is the way that it's supposed to be, go ahead and tap sign and file. Now, once you do this, a signature block will show up, sign it on your, uh, on your device, hit the done button, and then it'll immediately file to both ATC and the flight operations. Now, as you see, as soon as you file your flight plan, you're gonna get an acknowledgement from ATC. Another window will pop up, 
confirming that the flight plan has been filed with ATC. Wait for it here, it takes a couple of seconds. All right, there it is. Now we see that NFG to TNP on Shark 67, the flight plan has been acknowledged by ATC. The only way that Fourth Flight receives this acknowledgement is if ATC sends it. So there's no chance that when you file, if you get the acknowledgement, that it has not been filed. Um, one important note is if you're filing far ahead in the future and you contact ATC to try to ensure that your flight plan is in the system, it will not be there until 22 hours prior. Okay. Um, an important note is that if uh, you do file, it's in the flight system until two hours after your departure, uh, your estimated departure time. So you can call call for your flight plan and clearance anytime from the 22 hour mark before to the two more two hour mark after. Now, let's say that the mission changes for some reason. Uh, let's say Lance Corporal forgot to tell you that two, two passengers were added to your flight and you have to do it on the fly. So the best way to do it and the workflow that's going to show you uh, the information of appropriately is to actually change it on this view first. So we'll go down to persons. We'll change the count from three to five. All right, and then we'll go ahead and we'll tap amend. Now, as you can see, the flight plan has changed and it says that it's out of sync. It's important that you accept the change so that it is, it is converted over to the actual filing form going to ATC. As you see here, there's five persons now on board. Now what you can do is hit the file changes button and then hit the amend. Now this will amend the flight plan automatically with both ATC and flight ops. Obviously the plan has changed, so you're gonna need to sign and file the DD-1801 once more. All right, now it confirms that the flight plan has been changed and you'll receive an acknowledgement reflecting the same. Now let's say on another scenario, your flight plan has actually been canceled. The sortie is completely canceled. Uh, CO decided you're not flying that day. Now, uh, one thing to know is that whenever you cancel or amending, depending on where you are in the country, there is a time frame on an electronic amendment that will be accepted. New York Center and Indianapolis Center require 61 minutes of time notification prior to you amending that flight plan. For the rest of the country, it's 47 minutes. If you file, or I'm sorry, if you amend within this time, you're gonna hit what we call a, a lockout period. It's where you have to manually coordinate with ATC. It isn't really a big deal. You can call for your clearance and make whatever changes are necessary. Um, one more thing I want to show, go ahead and tap the amend button again for me, Tom. Now let's say that you actually don't want to file to ATC and you don't want to electronically file the base ops. Your SOPs decide that you need to hand walk a flight, uh, the DD-1801 over to your uh, flight operations. You can do this by simply tapping the send to button, which is a little square box in the arrow in the top right of that file form. Now there's a couple of ways that you can send the information. If you wanna just print it out, you can do it here. You can save the document to four flight documents and possibly share with the other members of your squadron if that's an easier way to do it. But you just have the ability to hand walk that uh, DD-1801 or uh, send it in any, any way that you want if you do not wanna send electronically to a base ops email or to ATC. All right, now that we confirmed uh, how to send the, the DD-1801, uh, like I said, we got our sortie scrapped, so we're gonna go ahead and cancel that flight plan. Now, important thing on cancellation, it falls in that same thing of that lockout period. So if you cancel, let's say 10 minutes prior to your estimated time of departure, you're gonna get a rejection saying that you can't cancel right now. That's expected. All you have to do is wait until two hours after your ETD and the flight plan will drop automatically. But here you can cancel, and as soon as you cancel your flight plan, you're gonna get an acknowledgement that the flight plan was canceled and it's gonna notify both base operations and ATC that there's no more need for the flight plan. And that in a nutshell is filing with ForeFlight. As you can see, it's, it's a pretty simple process. Um, obviously we were going pretty slow through it, but if, uh, if you're on a time crunch, then you can definitely get a flight plan filed within a minute and a half if you guys need to uh, push fast.
And I guess we can go ahead and take a quick break if there's any filing specific questions. Yeah, one question here is, uh, is there a way to manually annotate additions or changes to the DD-1801? Once you get up, uh, actually, Travis, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I do. Uh, thank you. What you can do is there's no direct way to annotate the DD-1801 as part of the filing flow. But you'll notice I saved it to four flight documents. In the documents, you can make manual changes to the DD-1801 using our annotations features. So I could add uh, additional text here if I need it, and I can change the size, color, the appearance. So I can add uh, add more to the DD-1801 here and print from ForeFlight using this method. One important thing to note when you do this is that if you're going to resubmit to base ops, it does need to be do, uh, need to be done within the filing portal. However, if you're just going to contact them directly, you can send that document uh, via email from the document section. Another question about uh, how to view the 1801 after filing. I think the best answer to that is just to include yourself in the email there. Make sure you're getting a copy of it. Uh, but there are the you know you can save it to documents. You can print it out. There's several ways you can you can keep track of your 1801. Another filing question here is um, how do you know if ATC rejected the route or if there are other problems with the filed route? So great question. Um, so whenever you're in the flights view here underneath the the flight plan when a flight plan is filed you're going to see it in green letters uh, like you see where it's base ops notified you're also going to see filed now if a flight plan gets rejected where that filed portion is it's actually going to be in red and it's going to say rej or, or uh, notifying you of the rejection in addition to that you're going to get a specific error um, a lot of times we like to tap out of windows quickly, but if you read the rejection message, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be able to uh, field the problem on your own. Um, so that's exactly how we notify you if the flight plan is rejected and you'll know immediately. All right, and one more here uh, that is probably from someone who's flying in, uh, in Europe. Is it possible to file a Z or Y flight plan via ForeFlight? starting VFR to IFR or vice versa? It definitely is. So we're gonna go back into our file form here, and then we're gonna go into flight rules. Now, as you can see, I currently selected IFR. You can also select VFR, YFR, ZFR, and DFR. YFR and ZFR obviously are composite flight plans, and that's exclusively used within Europe and Canada. That is not a function that we use domestically, so just a, just a heads up, we've seen uh, that be a problem in the past. The other one that you're going to see is the DVFR. Now, most of you know when you're flying at Oconus or let's say you're uh, Coast Guard C-130 uh, flying out down near, around the Bahamas, you're going to cross the ADIS. And you can actually file a DVFR flight plan um, in that specific case. But uh, to be more direct, yes, YFR and ZFR capabilities are right under the flight rule section. All right. Thank you, Josh. That was fantastic. We'll move it on to Grant to talk about custom content. So uh, I'll give a quick intro for, for custom content. So custom content in terms of DOD and the military flight bag. So as Grant has given these examples, think about when you're on deployment or uh, maybe if you're uh, in a squadron that has a, a designated training area, this is a tool that you can use to put that on your map in ForeFlight. If you are maybe on deployment and you're flying through certain operational areas and you want to mark things that you're seeing out there, this is a way that you can do that. Or also, if you have custom uh, procedures for your squadron or perhaps the uh, deployment site or the base that you're at, maybe there's a complicated procedure to get in that isn't used uh, by civilians, this is a way that you can bring that into floor flight. Um, one quick plug I want to give to our filing team. So filing with ForeFlight, you know, we have a team of, of support. So if you're ever out there on the road and you're having trouble, uh, we're there to help you. So uh, you can always reach out to ForeFlight support. Uh, we have a specialized team in the filing in the filing team that can help you out. 
Uh, I'll turn it over to Grant now. Thanks, Tom. Uh, before I get too far ahead of myself, I'd like to admit that we could easily spend an hour just on custom content alone and the ForeFlight content pack. Fortunately, we will be doing that soon. Uh, so if you stay tuned to foreflight.com slash on frequency, you can find out more information about that upcoming webinar. Uh, if you're needing information today, I suggest visiting foreflight.com slash content packs. Once again, that was foreflight.com slash content packs. Now, content packs are a tool available to us uh, to import custom content. Content packs can range from a basic list of waypoints to complex bundles of georeference charts, custom-made map layers, linked documents, uh, special terminal instrument procedures. Really what you put in your content pack is up to you. Uh, to give you a better understanding of what they're capable of, we loaded the sample content pack into this iPad using Apple's AirDrop functionality. Now, we could have also brought this content pack in using email. Um, we could have hosted our content pack on a website, or we could have imported the content pack via some sort of uh, cloud document service like Dropbox, Amazon S3, or Box. Uh, once again, we're not really going to go into the specifics of how to do that in this webinar, but that information will be coming shortly, or it's available on our website. From the custom content page, we can view the contents of our pack. However, this isn't generally how you'll view the content uh, when flying normally. Uh, with that in mind, we'll head over to the maps page where we can view this custom content. Now, one of the files that we imported with the custom content was a map layer. Uh, because it's a custom map layer, we can enable and disable that map layer from the drop down menu, just like you would with any other published data. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I decided to include all of our custom content into one map layer named Sample MFB. However, we could have named this map layer whatever we wanted. Uh, we could have also broken up the content into multiple layers. Really, it's whatever makes the most sense for your operation. Uh, on my personal device, I have a map layer for all of the hospitals in the area that I fly. I also have another map layer for all of the emergency service helipads that we could potentially land at. And I have a third custom map layer for parachute areas and uh, towers that are over 800 feet. Now, all of this custom content that you're seeing in this sample pack and also my personal pack, I created using Google Earth. Uh, there's a couple other tools out there, but Google Earth is, is fairly easy to work with. Um, and with a little practice, your options are almost limitless. In our custom map layer, we have um, waypoints that we use to identify hazards, as you can see here, which is identified by the uh, the icon with the 2009 foot marking, um, and also a potential drop zone, uh, avoid areas, which you can see I've got that red square there and I added some text to that, um, and other areas of interest. Uh, the content pack supports numerous Google Earth icons by default. However, we can bring in whatever custom icons we want if we save our files as a KMZ. My favorite feature of the content pack is the ability to associate a waypoint with an image or a document. If we take a look at our hypothetical drop zone, which is identified by that parachute icon, we can see that there are two associated files with that drop zone. You may need to zoom in just a little bit more, tap on the parachute, and you can see under the associated information section, there's LZ details, which is a PDF document, and then there's also imagery that I associated with this drop zone. You can tap on either one of those and it will open up our documents view and it'll show us the imagery for that drop zone. So here's a hypothetical drop zone for where we're gonna be conducting our sortie. We could then move back into the maps page, either by hitting the close button in the top left corner or by simply tapping maps. Uh, the hospital, which is just off to the left, bottom left part of our screen there, is also uh, another good example of what's possible in Content Pack. This is similar to what I have on my personal device. You notice there at the bottom, I have an information plate. If we tap that, it's gonna open up the documents view. And what I elected to do is I went into Google Earth, grabbed some screenshots of the hospitals, highlighted uh, points of interest like the wires, where the pad is located in the hospital. And I actually included 
six images of it. So if I've never been to this hospital or say I want to share this content pack with a colleague of mine and they've never been to the hospital, we can get a real good idea of what to expect before we even get there. Uh, there are these sorts of features built into ForeFlight already. However, if these are places that you fly regularly, putting this sort of uh, effort in ahead of time is often very beneficial. As you can see here at this hospital, where we've got some fairly large uh, wires right next to the helipad. Now, not only is it possible to associate these sorts of files with the user waypoint that we've created, but with our Bring Your Own Plates feature, you can also associate documents with published airports. Uh, for example, if we go back to the map, at the California Redwood Airport, or Alpha Charlie Victor, we've imported a special copter instrument approach procedure. This uh, copter approach is not part of DOD or Jeppesen data, so only we would have access to it. We imported this instrument approach into ForeFlight using, uh, using the content pack in the BYOP feature. Uh, the instructions on how to do this are very well documented on our support page. You can find the information at foreflight.com slash BYOP, or you could contact our support team at team at foreflight.com. Uh, not only can we associate instrument procedures with an airport, uh, but we could actually associate any document. It doesn't have to be an instrument approach. BYOP opens up the possibility to import custom ramp procedures, uh, maybe additional images, or any sort of airport-specific operations for the airports that you fly in and out of. So for example here, I imported, uh, using the BYOP feature, a parking diagram for this airport. If we tap on that parking diagram, it's gonna open up the image that I associated in the plates view. So I invite you all to visit foreflight.com slash content pack to learn more or you can email us at team at ForeFlight for more information. And with that, I'll hand it back over to Travis. All right, thank you, Grant. That was a great presentation. Are there any questions on the custom content portion that we can take at the moment? Hey, Travis, here's a good question. Um, can you create a custom map layer using Falcon View? You can create a custom map layer using Falcon View uh, and their export formats. We're not able to take the Falcon View files uh, organically yet. That is on our roadmap. Uh, however, there, uh, there are some technical limitations to overcome before we do. In the meantime, if Falcon View can export as a KML, as a GeoPDF, or as a KMZ, ForeFlight can read those files uh, in custom content or as content packs. Uh, additionally, ForeFlight uses a, a third format called GeoJSON, which is uh, compatible with our custom content features as well. Okay, to finish off the presentation, we have a few new features to show you. First, we have asked, we've been asked many, many times how to access giant reports in ForeFlight. Giant reports or ASRRs are uh, information about airports around the world published by AMC and marked as for official use only. This marking prevents ForeFlight from hosting this data uh, on our own. However, using the custom content features that Grant just showed, you can access the uh, aerodata.nga.mil website using your CAC and download a ready-made, essentially, content pack or zip file of the giant reports. Take that with no changes whatsoever needed, drop it into ForeFlight using any method we accept content packs, it's email, cloud distribution, Apple configurator through a wire connection, really any way you can get the file to the iPad, ForeFlight can ingest the file. It will appear here in the content pack section. Tap on giant reports. You can see we have a list of giant reports here. Again, this is sensitive data, so we won't actually show one, but we will show you how to access them. They're coded by airport code. This is off the shelf from NGA, no changes needed. Airports, search the identifier. find the giant reports under procedures 
other giant reports. And it's that easy. Next feature to show is our new marked positions feature. To use marked positions on MFB performance, access them from the map cog setting, scroll down to the marked position switch. When you activate marked positions, you'll see a new button appear on the left side. We'll turn on breadcrumbs with it as well. The two features complement each other nicely. And then we'll use our simulator feature. This is for demonstration purposes only, not for our production builds, to tell ForeFlight that we're currently flying. Let's see our see our aircraft appear. And as we fly, the breadcrumbs will begin to populate and marked positions will begin to function. So first, I'll tap the mark position button and the marked position appears. What this is, is essentially a very quick way to drop a snapshot of your position. You can enter any notes that would be appropriate, such as fuel or what you observed or anything else you need. You can provide a name, tap save, and the mark position appears nicely along with your breadcrumbs. We'll drop a second one to show that all of these fields are optional. You can simply tap away and the timestamp becomes the unique identifier of the marked position on the map. Marked positions are a bit more than just a point on a map, however, as we'll see in our track log view. Marked positions pers persist and live with the track log if a track log is being recorded at the time of the marked position. You can use these as a reference for later for record keeping to mark maneuvers uh, before and after the maneuver. And they export to Google Earth or any debriefing system along with the KML. Additionally, in our track log view, we've recently added our altitude and speed graphs and coupled with in AHARS device, pitch and bank are viewable parameters as well. Additionally, marked positions, if coupled with an AHARS device like the four flight sentry, record the attitude, speed, and altitude of your aircraft as well. They truly are a snapshot of the track log. And finally, for our performance customers, track logs are also viewable in 3D, very similar to how Tom showed you the 3D pre-flight, 3D post-flight is very useful for debriefing maneuvers. And as you can see, the 3D GPS position and attitude of the aircraft is recorded and viewable all in three dimensions. And this is from a third person camera or a first person camera with selectable speeds. And with that, this concludes the presentation. We'll open it up for Q&A. Travis, a big question on the uh, giant reports. Can you repeat that website where to find them? Yes, giant reports can be downloaded from aerodata, A-E-R-O-D-A-T-A -A dot N-G-A dot mil, and that requires cat card access. Here's a question um, related to uh, four flight performance profiles. Uh, this person says that they have the military flight bag performance package. Where can they find uh, the aircraft profiles that we provide for some aircraft? Due to the sensitivity of these performance profiles, four flight will individually provision these to qualified pilots. The way to get those is to email team at four flight from your military email address with uh, the identifier of the aircraft that you fly, and we will turn those profiles on for you. This is to comply with U.S. export regulations and to safeguard military data. So we turn those on at a granular level. We have a, a variety of military aircraft available, including the T-6, T-44, T-45, C-130, C-5, C-17, and many more. And a couple of questions about downloading data uh, and files. And the big thing to take away from it is once you download it, it's on your iPad 
and it won't go away until you either delete it yourself or it expires. So you don't have to re-download it for every flight. If you've, if you've got it once, you've got it uh, until it expires. And if you want to have, uh, if you want to pack for multiple flights, you can do that. You just use that save and favorite function to have multiple flights. Yeah, adding to that, so the, think of the pack as a fail safe. So you can set up your downloads to already have what you'll need for your flight. And then before any flight, you, you'll want to pack just to make sure that you haven't missed anything. PAC will intelligently look at your flight route and make sure that you have everything that you need for that flight, uh, in addition to weather and uh, information specific to that day. All right, uh, another question on content packs. Uh, can, how can you share a map overlay with another iPad directly from ForeFlight? At the moment, ahead. I don't believe we have that. Well, we do. So you content pack. You, you cannot. Can, you can uh, airdrop, email, or uh, save out to files a content pack. Individual pieces of custom content, with the exception of user waypoints, are not shareable. Though it is on our roadmap to address this. That's right. So if you have a, an overlay that is part of a content pack, then you can share the entire content pack with someone else. Um, but you can't share the individual overlay. You also can't delete individual pieces of a content pack on their own. You, you either have the entire content pack or you delete the entire content pack. That's correct. And if I may briefly circle back to the question on uh, Falcon View, for flight military flight bag can import the .crd route files from Falcon View as well. So we'll uh, look to bring those in to easily add the route you planned in your mission planning system and not have to re-enter the route into ForeFlight. Is, uh, is digital ATIS available in ForeFlight? Digital ATIS is available in ForeFlight for performance customers. Look for that on the METAR tab. Only at airports which support digital ATIS such as Austin Bergstrom. There's a, uh, this isn't really so much a question, but someone suggested that you um, briefly highlight the ETD versus ETA functionality that we just recently added. They said that this is useful for uh, time on target missions. Certainly, just a moment while I pull that up. And that is a feature like, like some of these others that is in uh, MFB performance only and any of the other uh, performance plans like Performance Plus. All right, hopefully the iPad is back up. I see it there. To access ETD or ETA planning, it's as easy as this switch here on the Flights tab, select ETA. And now this time selector is reflecting the time of arrival rather than the time of departure. So as a, as our commenter mentioned, very useful for planning time on target missions, as it will generate an ETD based on when you'd like to arrive at the point. Just looking through the uh, question list right now, looking for uh, another good one here. If anyone um, doesn't get their question answered uh, during this, please email team at foreflight.com so that you can get it answered there. We don't want to uh, leave you all hanging, but um, we, we have limited ability to answer questions in this format versus if you email us. Here's a good one, uh, Travis. Can we talk about the files section and flights? Yes, files. Uh, in addition to be to being imported as content packs or into the document system, can be brought in 
as an attachment on flights. And this goes along with our new dispatch product, which lets the flight travel from the web interface to the mobile interface very easily. And along with it, some files. Just a moment. To access the files portion, here we are on a flight. Files are located at the top. Tap on files and you will receive some instructions on how to use the flight attachments feature. Like to add a file and you have an option of where to add files from, including four flight documents. Import it and we'll attach one of our recent flight plan forms. Now, when I share this flight to another crewman or a wingman, that file will travel with it using the the share option in the upper right corner. Someone was asking about how they view the details of the Four flight performance profiles of a military aircraft profile, um, and I'm not sure if if they're referring to the the gritty gritty details about specific, uh, you know, by altitude um, performance details, or if they're just asking about the climb, cruise, and descent profiles uh, generally. But Travis, if you can, Travis or Tom, if you can uh, give a brief summary of that. Yeah. So let's just pull up. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that up a moment here we may just leave the ipad up rather than continuing to do this here we go so here we have the uh, t6 so this is an example of a training aircraft that a lot of people are using right now um, so this will give you an idea of the kind of information that you have uh, so you can see the performance profile so you can see a little bit of the information here you can also uh, change it if need be. So you're going to get like the best glide. Uh, you're going to get certain altitude ceilings, and you're going to get some weights. Um, generally, the way I describe uh, the aircraft performance profiles is rather than it being a file that you can look at, that you can read, that you can see all the numbers, we have an entire team of aircraft performance data people who are embedding these profiles with hundreds of thousands of data points that interact with our software. These data points are all taken uh, directly from the POH, from the aircraft manuals, and we're embedding that within these profiles. We don't really have it set up that you could just download that as an attachment to read it all, um, but know that we have a team of professionals that is taking performance data directly from the manuals and putting them into these profiles. This is a question that uh, would probably be good for Josh. Uh, is there a way to view the ACK message from ATC after the flight plan is acknowledged? Yeah, definitely. Um, so like I had, uh, stated earlier, you see where it said uh, on the screen now, you see where base ops has been notified. Um, once you see that acknowledgement, you're also going to get an email saying that the flight plan was acknowledged. So as long as you put the email address uh, to which you're going to be monitoring on the flight plan, you'll be able to get an acknowledgement message there as well, just to be able to confirm after the fact if you missed the notification on the actual display. Yeah, I believe the automated emails we send now with each flight plan that you file is uh, the what is it, the the flight plan confirmation and the briefing in one email, and then when you get an acknowledgement or an expected route, those are uh, those come in their own emails, I think? That is correct. Why don't we take one more question, and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up. 
All right, here's a great question to uh, end on. Is there a way that we can view this webinar again? And the answer- Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. The answer is yes, absolutely. Um, we record all of these. We're recording this webinar right now. And the this recording will be available on fourflight.com slash on frequency. You just scroll down on that page. You get to a section that says past events. And that is where we put, uh, we embed videos uh, of all of these webinars that we make. So if, uh, if you got here late or you have a buddy who you think would really benefit from seeing this, send them to that website and have them watch the video there. You can make it full screen and watch it on YouTube so you're not watching it in a little tiny box. Uh, but that is a great way to you know, reinforce what you've seen during this webinar, especially if uh, someone commented earlier that we were moving pretty fast, and that's because there's just so much to cover with ForeFlight MFB, so many different features to, to uh, mention. So if you wanna spend some more time with it, definitely go view it uh, starting either later today or probably tomorrow is when you'll want to take a look. But I think that that pretty well wraps it up. Um, thank you guys so much for putting this on. Uh, this uh, this MFB team is is great. You guys uh, obviously know everything there is to know about this, this ForeFlight product. So uh, Tom, if you want to go ahead and walk us out. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I just wanted to, again, thank everybody for attending today. We hope that you learned uh, at least a couple things that you can bring forward on the mission. For flight, one of the reasons we want to do this today is we wanted to show that we have a team of military veterans that are uh, focused on you and focused on the mission and wanting to bring uh, our experiences to help you out on future missions. So we want to be as, response, as responsive as we can to your needs. So continue to reach out to us with feedback, with things that could help you on your mission. And we wanna work with you. We wanna bring those functionalities into uh, the software moving forward. Just wanna thank the panel again and thank everyone for attending. And uh, we'll see you in the future.